Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this Apple Magic Mouse. So this is a version 1, one of the ones where you have to actually put your own batteries in rather than the rechargeable ones. Benefit of it is though that you can use it all the time because you can just swap the batteries while with the version 2 it's got a lightning port in a really weird spot here so you have to put the mouse on its side when you're charging it. But it uh, doesn't bother me because I haven't got a Mac anyway. I've just got this purely for the YouTube video. So I paid £12.98 for this. And you can see the list in here. It just says here, Apple Magic Mouse not working for spares. And uh, yeah, a couple of pictures. And it just says condition is for parts or not working. Right, so I was hoping that it was going to be a power issue. And it is. When you put batteries in, nothing happens, which I'll show you in a minute. But... Have a look at the condition here. Can you see that there's been an obvious leak? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's dirty contacts. I really hope it isn't because for me, they're the most boring videos in the world when it's just a battery related problem. But still, let's clean it up and uh, see. Hopefully something might have, you know, this uh, corrosion might have gone inside and damaged something else, which would be a bit more fun. Right, so watch this, pop the batteries in, they go this way and this way and if I turn it on can you see that there's no light coming on up here. So it is completely dead. Yeah. Right, so what I've got is I've got some white vinegar and I'm going to spray all the contacts, give them a good clean up and then uh, See, see what's going to happen. So I'm looking here now. If you look here, it looks like most of the corrosion was in the bottom left, so around this area here. So let's get me put some white vinegar on here. Give it a good wipe around. I can scrape the contacts a bit. Maybe I can use a fiberglass pen on them to try to clean them up a bit more. I'm just going to give them a little scrape now. Well, okay, I've just done it with the vinegar. I need to go over it with IPA afterwards. Let's just see if that's made any difference. And if not, we'll have to uh, take it apart. Right now it hasn't, which is interesting. But look, look at this. Can you see now that battery? That battery's loose, so basically this spring here is not pushing out as much as it should do. This one here. Can you see it's like on a spring-loaded thing? So I'm just going to try to free that up because that could be as simple as that. Yeah, in fact, if you have a look between both of them, okay, at least that makes it a bit more interesting. Have a look between that one and that one. Can you see this is a lot more pushed in? And these both go in the same way because if you look here, minus positive and minus and positive. So this needs to be pushed out more. So if I can't free that up, I might well have to take this apart. I presume what it is is corrosion maybe has, uh, there might be a sort of lump of corrosion in this section in here. I'm gonna try to get some pliers and actually physically push it out or pull it out. There we go, I can hear it crunching. And you can see the white fur. Can you see the white fur suddenly coming out? This stuff here. So that's what's causing it to, there you go. That's what's causing it to be stuck. Okay, so there's probably quite a lot of corrosion inside here. Oh yeah, there's loads coming out now. Got all that. Right, let's give that another clean.
Yeah, look at them, they're both the same size now, aren't they? Right, let's try it now and see if the light comes on now. Right, interestingly, the light is still not coming on. Ooh, okay. Well, I'm already interested now. Right, so it looks like I do have to take it apart. Yeah, I'm forcing it up now, and that light is still not coming on. Well, I'm happy about that. Right, let's see how we do take this thing apart. Now, when I was looking through the various different eBay listings, one person did say that uh, he had a look on YouTube, and basically it's very hard to take these rails off without breaking them. So uh, it might be one of these things that are hard to take apart, but let's see. Okay, that seems to be coming out quite nice just using my fingers. Yeah, there we go. I didn't break that. Let's see if this side will come out as easy. Maybe this has already been apart. It's saying that this side now is not coming out easy at all. So let's try and pry it. Here we go, so I'm just giving it a kind of wiggle. There we go, excellent. Right, you can even see a bit of corrosion on that as well. Right, so that's that. Now, I did watch a YouTube video on this when I ordered this a couple of weeks ago. And this basically, uh, there we go, that pulls down like that. So it just looks like it's stuck on. Excellent. Yeah, you can see there's just sticky tape around here. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. So there's four little tabs that you have to press in. If you have a look in here, if you look really closely. Let me just uh, zoom in to show you. Right, I think it's these things in here. If you have a look, can you see just in here? I think I have to lift it out over that or something to release it. There you go, can you see? It's lifting up now, and there's four of them. I think that's it anyway. Yeah, there you go, watch. So if I lift it up there, Oops, ah, that's annoying, I snapped that one. Okay, let's try to not snap the others, and I should still be okay. Annoying, because I actually did that okay off camera. <laughs> it's just that when I uh, put the camera back, I, it snapped. That one doesn't really want to come, so I'm going to go to the other side. There you go. Actually, do you know what? It's easier if you push down on the mouse when you do it. So sort of push down. Oh, the reason the back's hard is because the back of the mouse doesn't push down, does it? Right, let's see what happens now if I start to ease that off. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we've definitely got this side off, so we should be able to get this side off by just pressing down. Right, I've annoyingly locked the other side back into place. Right, that side is now free. Push down here. That side's now free. Excellent, okay. So that's how you do it, you do the uh, the top ones first. So that's annoying that I broke that one. So now I'm going to have to reach over 
and I'm going to just undo this ribbon cable and excellent I can actually see green corrosion on the ribbon cable connector there. Can you see it along here? Right, so let's see how this ribbon cable works. Right, so this is just a push fit, I think. Oh no, I think it might lift up. Hold on. No, I think it's just a push fit. There we go. Right, so we've got a little bit of corrosion on the actual ribbon cable itself. Just there by my nail. Yeah, so it's leaked quite bad. There's loads of corrosion actually. Look up here. Look at that. Oh yeah, and all the way down here by this, uh, by you know this sort of whatever it's called, it's called an optical sensor or something. Have a look at the green corrosion all the way in here. Right, I'm going to have to just spray everything with the vinegar and I'm going to get a flux brush, give it a good clean and uh, then I'll have to put IPA everywhere to get rid of the vinegar. I'm just going to try to just scrape away most of the green to begin with. The amount of corrosion, I'm, I'm not so sure now, I'm not as confident about fixing this. In fact, I think I'm going to dismantle it further. Right, I think to release the circuit board from here, I'm going to have to actually push these things in, I think, like that. And this one, you see, there we go. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? That's that side out. It seems to be stuck here for some reason. There's a little button there, I'm not sure what that's for. Right, am I going to be able to take this out or not, or am I going to damage the front of it? What is keeping that in place? Seems to be stuck around this area here, but I can't see anything. Oh, I think it's just a battery contact that's uh, stopping it. Oh, there we go, yeah. Right, we're free now, so I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to have to bend this up. There we go. Excellent. Right, I've got that out, so that will allow me... God, look at that. Look at that there. Oh, this is really, really badly corroded. At least it will give me access to it now. Yeah, the corrosion's gone everywhere. Oh, okay, so that's just a switch here.
bit unclear how that switch actually works. So that's in the down position, that's in the off position. So when it's down, what's happening here? Doesn't look like a normal switch, does it? And look, it's like it's clickable from the top. How does that make it turn on? And there's only one contact here, and then nothingness. That is weird. Don't understand that at all. Ah. Two con contacts over here are not doing anything, because there's just plastic there. When you do that, it's just going into that empty space there. Like that. I still don't know what that's that's for. And this is just to recognise when it's got this on the uh, when when it's got this on it. I don't know. I have noticed there's like two black plastic things, and I hope they're not important because I don't know where they came off. I'm hoping they're just kind of left over with little bits of plastic from something from like the moulding. I'll keep them over here anyway just in case. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this in vinegar to get rid of the, uh, to, to help stop the, uh, to neutralise the corrosion basically because uh, vinegar is an acid and this is alkaline batteries. And then I'm going to give everything a really good clean with IPA and we'll have a close look and see what the, what the situation is. I mean it's even gone as far as up here as well. You can see it all fizzing up where it uh, meets the corrosion. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, before I clean it with IPA, I'm going to get some distilled, uh, deionized water and I'm just gonna give this all a good wash including this here. I'm gonna uh, I'm not gonna do this because I don't want the water to get trapped up here but this I'm gonna wash, this I'm gonna wash, I can wash that as well. Basically I can wash all these parts here and uh, then I can clean them out of IPA afterwards. I'm not actually gonna do that because I don't want a load of water getting into the switch there. I'm just gonna clean that with IPA but the rest of this I am going to clean with water. The ionized water so it won't have minerals and stuff in it. I've given them a good wash now, so now what I'll have to do is I'll have to get IPA and then give it all a clean and hopefully that will evaporate off the water. Now before that I am going to use my tweezers and just zoom in because I can still see corrosion on this bit here and I can still see corrosion on the pins here, so I want to make sure I get rid of all the corrosion. Right, so you can see all the blue bits in here. Good news is the terminals are coming up really good, you can see. So once I finish with them I think they're going to look probably pretty much perfect.
Clean it all now with some isopropyl alcohol. This is 99.9%. .9 wondering because I'm dousing this sensor here in IPA whether it's going to ruin it or not because I presume that has to be perfectly clean on the inside I'm just going to get some canned air because I want to I just want to blow around this kind of uh, this optical sensor thing whatever it's called Right, let me zoom in and show you. It all looks definitely very clean now. Right, so these are those battery contacts. I can't see them being a problem. And the other side. Yeah, remember all the corrosion around the chip? I mean this optical thing. That's gone. The backs look pretty clean here. Can't see any corrosion around there. So I mean, maybe some of these chips have already blown. I don't know, because remember, even even myself now was trying to turn this on. So there would have been power throwing, uh, flowing through some of it. So uh, yeah. Let me just check that a second. Well, I'm going to give that another go there. Okay, I'll do, I'll do that again. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's okay. And this little one here. Right, so I just got to let it all dry off and then uh, we'll apply power to it. I wonder, can I, I suppose I'll have to partially put it back together, won't I? Yeah, I'll let it dry for a bit and then I'll pop it back together and see what it does. That ribbon cable is going to be a very awkward one to get back in. Also the ribbon cable is nice and clean now as well if you have a look at that. Well, I suppose I just have to try and use some pliers to get that back in. I'm not going to use sharp ones, I'm going to get some blunt ones like this. I think it's just a friction fit one which is annoying because it makes it much harder to uh, much harder to put in. You know, if it had a lid that you could flip down, then it would be easier. Actually, do that. I think I'm going to have to. I need to peel that off. Uh, I think I'm going to have to snip this rail off here so I can bend this down more because there's just not enough room. It was okay pulling it out because I can just use force, but look. I can't get that back in, there's not enough, uh, it's very hard. I'll give, it, I'll give it a couple more goes, but you can see the problem I've got, there's not enough slack there, is there, to get that into there. I wonder why they didn't make that just a tiny little bit longer. No, I can't get that in. Right, I'm going to snip this.
Okay, I don't think that's going to really make any difference to the strength of it. So now hopefully I can uh, heal this off a bit. There we go. Right, then when it's in, I can always stick that back down again. Right, that gives me more room. There's still not lots of room, but hopefully now it will be doable. Oh, actually, I can do it that way now, look. God, that is incredibly hard to put in. Right, I think that's in, but it was very, very, very hard. Maybe it all might need to go in another millimetre or so. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that too many times. I mean, it should do something now, shouldn't it? So let's put the battery in there. Let's turn that off. Right. Yes! Yes! Look at that. Brilliant. Yes! Look at it! So it looks like it's trying to pair. Ah, oh, what a result. Still don't know if it's going to work or not, because obviously I might have completely ruined this sensor now. I'll tell you what, I haven't got a Mac to plug it into, but let's connect it up to my... Uh, my PC. Excellent. Yeah, and I can hear it clicking. Doesn't spring back very nice though. Maybe it needs to be fully back together. Oh, do you know what? Remember that switch that I said? <laughs> the switch with the button on the top, of course, that's the click, isn't it? Yeah, that's the click. It's definitely not springing back, though. Right, let's, uh, let's pop it back, back together and see if it springs back then. there so now turn that on there yeah we've got the little green light and uh, let's just see if it's gonna click hmm I'm not happy with that click at all unless of course that switch is still drying out remember I did drop it in the IPA oh there we go oh here we go it's coming back now Right, let's uh, connect it up to my uh, PC. This little GPD pocket does have Bluetooth, so let's go to Windows, Settings, Devices, Bluetooth and other devices, add a Bluetooth device, and mouse or keyboard. And now let's turn this on, and let's see if it's going to pair up. Yeah, it says mouse input here, so let's tap on that. Apple Magic Mouse, excellent. It says connecting. Apple Magic Mouse. Oh, ho, ho. look at that! It's moving. Look, 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 you can see it. Right, let's see if the click's working. Oh, fantastic. How do I get rid of that? Click there. Right, right click, is right click going to work? No, so it doesn't look like right click's working. I wonder how you get right click to work. 
Now, I can't test any other scroll features because they will only work when uh, I think you have to download Bootcamp or something like that, or there's another there's another app type thing that I think you you can buy, and then you can have the features like you know when you scroll down, and I think you can swipe left and right on these things. Yeah, so that's definitely working there, but right click's not right click's not working. Now, how would you get right click to work? I wonder. Uh, I wonder is it to do with where I broke that thing at the back? I wonder how it knows the difference between the clicks if there's only one button. Do you know what I mean? Right, let me uh, let me do a little bit of research online because I don't really want to take it apart again if it's some kind of software thing that right click's not working. Right, okay, there wasn't much online apart from changing it in the settings, but obviously I can't change it in the settings because I haven't got a Mac to change it. But on iFixit, somebody did ask a question about it. They said they took it apart and they think it's something to do with a little finger thing going over. And then somebody got back and said, try the settings, and then he got back and said it appears to be working now. But yeah, I was messing around with that little finger. And if you think about it, there's only one button here. So the one button does everything, but it must be when it registers to click on the finger as well, or if the finger connects to something else, might be another piece of metal somewhere, then that must be the right click. So, uh, and also, this doesn't click great, you know, because I broke the thing here. So basically, it clicks fine if you kind of got your hand rest on it here, but if you were just to do this, see, it doesn't, uh, well, it's okay, but it was actually quite important that I didn't break that little thing there, which is annoying because the only reason I broke it, I, I had actually done it, I just then showed it towards the camera <laughs> because I did it off camera. So that's slightly annoying that, uh, that that bit there has broken. So, but anyway, let's try to get this right click fixed. So much easier when you've done it once already. Right, so I think what's happened is I've bent this out of place, which if you have a look, it does look pretty flat. So let's lift that up a little bit. Now, why does this equate to right click? Where does it exactly go to? Do you know what I mean? Why would pressing this, that is weird. Why would pressing that have anything to do with right click? Or is it not? Is this just what makes it spring back? Remember I said at the beginning it wasn't very springy. Maybe this is what just makes it spring back. So what would the right click be? Still don't know what these things are for the corner either. There's one here, one here, and one here. I don't really know what they do. I'm going to lift these up because that one's bent there. Right, well, let's... Uh Unless somehow this metal thing connects with something on the circuit board up here. Maybe there's some little clicky thing up here. Maybe somehow that measures resistance? I don't know. How on earth does that right click work? Well, it could be as something as simple as when you press right click that this lifts, the pressure comes off this little bit more. You know this thing here? You know when you lean on the right hand side, I wonder does the pressure just come off this ever so slightly which then registers a right click? I wonder could that be it? Well maybe I should, should I mess around with it now when it's all apart? Maybe I should do that. All right, so let's see now if I click this what happens. Excellent, so that's right click. So when there's no pressure on it, it's right click. So now let's put pressure on this here. And now let's click it. And it doesn't do anything. Yes, that's what it's for. So this tiny little button here is the right click. So watch this, now when I hit this switch, so this finger's got nothing to do with it. All this finger is, is to keep the mouse up to allow you to have a nice spring back after you click it. But watch, when I click now, can you see it's gonna come up with, uh, hold on. Well, it did a second ago, it came up with right click. One second. Let's push that in. Right, 
that's, that's nothing. Well, why did it come up with right click a second ago? It's not doing anything now. Is it even working? Yeah, it is. Uh, Hmm. Oh, I thought I had it there for a minute. Unless, of course, this button's dodgy. Yes, it's there. Maybe the button's dodgy. So, look. Right. Let's uh, let's see now. So, if I hold this button in just with my finger and press it, it doesn't do anything. But now if I let go and press it, it still doesn't do anything. But if I free this up a bit, and now do it, mm, it seems very hit and miss, doesn't it? Well look, rather than me try to guess, let me put it back together and just see if it's working. I mean, we've definitely seen it come up, so it looks like it could be just complete coincidence when I'm pressing this in and out, but I'm wondering what is this here for. So uh, let's pop it back together and see what, what happens. Right, let's just see now. Right click. Right, left click's working there. And right click did work. Yes, right click's working. It's just that the mouse feels funny. Right, let's pop it back together now and see if it keeps on working or not. And if not, at least I know then it might be something more to do with the, the kind of uh, the fact that maybe this thing at the bottom's broken. I suppose I could try to super glue back that back into place, but it just took so much force to put it on, I don't think it's gonna work. It's working. Right, so if you have a look now, if I go right click, can you see it's coming up here? I very hit and miss that. Very hit and miss. Right, so that's working there. No, it's not working. Hmm. Why is it so hit and miss? I hate faults like this that work and don't work, you know, because you take it apart, you mess around with it, and then it looks like it's working, and then you uh, put it back together and it's not working. The first two times I did it, it worked okay. Right, okay, I'm gonna take it apart again. I think I'm gonna douse that little gold switch in, uh, see, look, it worked, it worked then. I'd love to know what the what's causing it to work. Let's take this off. I came up there. Well, just give me a little while. I'm just going to keep messing around with this. I want to work out what the uh, what the right switch is.
See, it's so annoying. Look, this is a few seconds later, and watch every single time it's working. But I don't know why it's working. There you go, it stopped again. It's not working every single time, look. That's, that's definitely the left button. Uh, well, I'm going to IPA that little that little gold switch. Right, and I'm also going to put a bit of deoxid in it. I think it's that gold switch. Right, it's working consistently now when it's uh, apart. Let's see if it's going to work when it's together. No, it's stopped again. Oh, this is so annoying. Right, okay, I haven't put it fully back together, but I've got the metal bit on, but I haven't got the rails on. But watch this, moving it around, left click isn't right clicking, which is good. So if I was to, for example, click down here, you can see it's coming up there, click over here, and then right click. Hold on, right click. It feels weird because I haven't got the rails on. Yeah, I think that's working. But I'm not 100% sure if it's definitely that little gold switch or not, but the gold switch must be doing something, mustn't it? So uh, that's all I can think of, is that it releases the pressure on that, which then causes it to work. Appears to be working, I'll show you in a minute. So I'm just gonna clean this up now with some, uh, with the wet wipe. Right, okay, here we go. Final test time. So let's uh, get the little laptop here. And let's close this down. Close all tabs, close all. Now, left click, fine, right click. <laughs> oh my God, no, what on earth? Seriously, how many times did that work when I didn't have those black rails on? And now it's not working again. What on earth is going on? Is it to do with the brake at the back? Right, so it's not clicking properly. Okay, so it must be something to do with the rails. So let's take it apart bit by bit. Right, so it's still not working. So now let's pop off one of the rails. I'll tell you what, let's just take that off. Let's leave that rail on. Yeah, when I've got that rail on, it's not allowing me to click down. Yeah. So it does work without that rail. So for some reason, the rail is stopping it from working. Why is that? 
There goes that little plastic thing that just fell out. Right, okay, I'm, uh, I've got three minutes left on my camera. So what I'm gonna do is, rather than this video go on for hours and hours and hours, I'm gonna keep looking at it until I've worked out what the problem is, and then I will let you guys know. Quick, quick, I've gotta finish the video before it fails again. Right, I, I think I know what's wrong with it. Now bearing in mind, I've taken it apart. There's a few things at the side that's bent. I've missing this one from the corner, which is gonna affect the performance a bit. But if I go to the very top right, so not just here, it's quite uncomfortable, but if I go to the very top right and push down hard, then it does work. So look, you can see it's moving around now. And then if I go, can you see there, it comes up, yep. Left click, top right hard, it comes up. Top right, but I do have to go hard. Top right hard, comes up. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, there you go. So I better end it now before it goes wrong again. So there you go, up there, top right. Look, it seems to be working quite well at this moment in time. So I don't know whether it just needs a bit of freeing up or something, or whether that arm just needs to fit properly in its place, but it, uh, it does appear to be working now. Look, so it's working every single time I do it. So if I go to there, and if I go to display settings, you can see it comes up there, yep. And right click again. There we go, so I'm happy that that is working. Am I actually gonna use it? No, I don't think so. I mean, I haven't got a Mac, and I think it's much better just to use a mouse that's designed for Windows 10 rather than jump through hoops to use this. If I'm honest with you, I'm not a complete lover of it anyway. I don't think there's anything, I know it's obviously very minimalist, but I don't think there's anything wrong with having a left button and a right physical button. You know, they've done this to be all styly and stuff like that. But I haven't actually got a problem with a mouse, uh, just a normal mouse. So uh, yeah, maybe if you were some sort of graphic designer in some fancy office somewhere, you would want this to look nice and sleek and stuff. But I'm quite happy with my Logitech mouse that has the scroll wheel in the middle that I can move up and down. It's got lovely feedback, clicks every little time I can click in on it. I don't need to be swiping left, right, up and down and stuff like that. I'm not knocking it. It looks like a, a lovely piece of little piece of engineering, but for me, it's just purely for the YouTube video. So it just shows you leaky batteries has caused a serious amount of damage in this one. So they must have been leaking for a long amount of time. I think that what's happened is this has been stored somewhere because if the batteries were leaking that much, I'm pretty sure the mouse wouldn't have been working with the batteries that low. So I think this has probably been stored somewhere. Maybe they've gone away, moved country or something like that for a while or just stopped using it. It's been put in a cupboard with the batteries in and I would say they've been leaking for a long amount of time. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. Right click is working, left click's working and you can move around. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.